There's something that I've been dying to tell you for the past 16 months. Words that I wish I could have uttered. And today, I'm finally able to say them. For Canadians, international travel is coming back. I'll give you a minute to get out of your system. Scream, shout, celebrate, do whatever you need to do. I'll wait for you. Yes, yes, yes. Indeed, the big news for this month's When Can We Travel update is that Canada has announced that it will be lifting the three-day hotel stopover and the 14-day mandatory quarantine upon return for any fully vaccinated travelers as of July 5th, 2021. And this means that if you've gotten your vaccine, then travel internationally is gonna be a lot more realistic this summer, this fall, this winter, basically any time in the second half of 2021. So in this video, we'll go over everything you need to know about the new policy as you think about international trips for the rest of 2021. We'll also talk a little bit about the current situation around domestic travel. We'll take a look at what the situation is with vaccine passports, both domestically and abroad. And finally, we'll also touch upon when Canada's borders are set to reopen to foreign travelers as well. If you enjoy these videos, if you like the work we do at Prince of Travel, or if you're simply dying to hop on a plane again and start collecting those passport stamps, remember those with a vengeance this time, then go ahead and smash that like button down below and subscribe to the Prince of Travel YouTube channel. It really helps out the channel, especially if you do it right now, just as the video is starting out. And with that out of the way, let's delve into the very, very exciting news of Canada relaxing the quarantine restrictions. Mark your calendars for Monday, July 5th at 11.59 p.m. Eastern time, because that's the minute that the new policies are going to kick in. After that moment, any individual who's eligible to enter Canada and who is considered fully vaccinated can skip the 14-day mandatory quarantine upon their return. Instead, they simply need to present a suitable quarantine plan while they wait for their negative test results from the border. And if those results do come back negative, they're free to go back to their normal daily lives, leave their homes, and integrate with the rest of society. Now, the definition of fully vaccinated is very precise under this new policy. To be considered fully vaccinated, you do have to have had both doses of the Pfizer, Moderna, or AstraZeneca vaccines, or the single dose Johnson & Johnson vaccine, and you must have had your final dose at least 14 days prior to your entry into Canada. Any mixing and matching of these vaccines between the first and second dose should be okay as well because all four vaccines are considered acceptable by Health Canada. And in the future, there's also the scope to expand this list of eligible vaccines as Health Canada continues to refine the list. Some of the very lucky ones among you might have already received the full two doses of the COVID-19 vaccine. And so that means that now you can probably already start planning your trips to, let's say, the United States or somewhere internationally. And then by July 5th, if you were to come back, you would already be eligible to skip the 14-day quarantine. However, for most Canadians, we're still waiting to get the second dose of the vaccine. It is projected that most Canadians will have gotten their second shots by around the end of July. And so when we think about August, September, October, we can already start earnestly thinking about international trips and skipping the quarantine when we get back. Of course, there are a few very important things to note here. Number one, if you're not considered fully vaccinated, which means that it hasn't been 14 days since your full dose of one of the four approved COVID-19 vaccines, then you still will need to undergo the three-day hotel stopover followed by the 14-day quarantine at home if you're arriving into Canada by air or just the 14-day quarantine at home if you're crossing the land border. Number two, and this is gonna tie into our discussion on vaccine passports later on, so make sure to stick around to that part of the video, you do need to submit your vaccine documentation into the Arrive Can app, which is the government of Canada's official travel app, before your arrival into Canada. Now, personally, I think it's also gonna be wise to carry a paper version of your vaccine documentation, just as a backup, in case you need to show the border officer that you have, in fact, been fully vaccinated and that you're exempt from the 14-day quarantine. Number three, it's important to remember that this first phase of relaxed travel restrictions still only applies to individuals who have the right to enter Canada. So that includes Canadian citizens and permanent residents. Canada's borders remain closed to foreign visitors for the time being, and that includes the land border to the United States. Americans are still not allowed to enter, and that's been extended until at least July 21st, 
Personally, I feel like as of July 21st, it's likely to be lifted with the vaccination and case transmission situation in both countries, which is looking very positive. I do expect that our fully vaccinated American friends will be able to visit us north of the border once again after July 21st, and hopefully it won't be long after that that our borders are fully open to foreign visitors who are fully vaccinated as well, also thus giving a much needed boost to our local Canadian travel industry too. And we'll definitely have more updates on that once again in next month's When Can We Travel update. And finally, number four, I know there's many families with young children who are wondering whether you'll be able to travel internationally this summer and fall, even though your children might not be eligible for the vaccine just yet. If that's the case, and your unvaccinated children are coming back into Canada, they will need to quarantine at home for 14 days. However, if you're a fully vaccinated parent who's accompanying your child during their quarantine period, you can leave your place of quarantine. You can leave your home while your children are undergoing the 14-day quarantine. Now, before we get too excited about international travel, the irony that we're celebrating the end of quarantine, when I'm still sitting in my quarantine period here on my last day of quarantine in Hong Kong, is not lost on me. Certainly, there's still gonna be lots of travel restrictions and obstacles and challenges to deal with as you embark on international trips. And if my experience is any indication, you should always, always double check, triple check, quadruple check the rules and regulations that you're facing if you're gonna take international trips this year. And so perhaps some of you are not ready to commit to a full international trip just yet, in which case domestic travel within Canada is very much back on the table this summer and this fall. Canada's provinces are all either already fully open or they're planning to open as soon as July. And this even includes the Atlantic provinces which have been a part of their own Atlantic bubble since the early days of the pandemic, they're planning to open to the rest of Canada, fully vaccinated travelers, of course, without quarantine, as soon as mid to late July, depending on the specific Atlantic province. Outside of the Atlantic region, pretty much every province is open to travel. Besides Manitoba, who's dealing with some high case counts right now and are discouraging travel, but I'm sure they won't be too far behind. And in terms of the territories, the Yukon Territory is open to fully vaccinated travelers, whereas Northwest Territories and Nunavut are both closed to outsiders for the time being, given the fact that both of these territories have more sensitive communities within them. All right, so we've talked about international travel, we've talked about domestic travel, both are looking very positive, very exciting for the fall. Now let's get to my favorite segment of these When Can We Travel updates, vaccine passports. This topic always gets all of you riled up in the comments every single time. So of course, we're gonna talk about it as much as possible. What's the latest on vaccine passports here in Canada and globally? Well, it appears that after all the countries in the world had so many months to prepare for the idea of a vaccine passport to facilitate international travel, it's the European Union that's coming out ahead. They will be launching the EU Digital COVID Certificate as of July 1st. The EU DCC, as it's going to be known, has already been issued to citizens of 17 countries, and it's going to show a digital proof of vaccination or a negative test to facilitate citizens of these countries as they travel within the EU. And with all of its member states either connected to the EU DCC or ready to connect into the system, European Union citizens will have a far easier time traveling among the region this summer. The EU DCC is going to mark a return to safe and free movement within the European Union, so that's really great to see. And the regulation requiring that countries use the EU DCC will be in place for a 12-month period. In some ways, I think it's somewhat natural that the EU was the first part of the world to introduce the vaccine passport for international travel, just because all of its member states are so tightly connected, and there is that pressing priority to restore safe and free movement within the EU. And we'll see over the coming months how the system actually works in practice. Now here in North America, in Canada and the US, there's still some distance to go before we get the full vaccine vaccine passport system up and running, with Prime Minister Justin Trudeau recently commenting that the first phase of the proof of vaccination is going to be through the Arrive Can app as we had discussed, and then the actual vaccine passport system is going to launch closer to the fall in cooperation with allies like the United States and the EU. As I've mentioned in previous updates, my prediction here is that in Canada we're going to get our very own digital green health code of some kind on our phones and it's gonna show our proof of vaccination and any recent negative tests that we had done. And I further predict that there's gonna be a way to transmit the green health code to the systems of neighboring countries like the United States, or perhaps 
the European Digital COVID Certificate that the EU has launched. And this is going to be a way to facilitate smooth and seamless international travel between these frequently visited destinations among Canadians. You're just going to need to have your digital green health code, transmit it to your destination system, and then maybe show it at the border and you're good. Now here in Asia, there's already systems like this up and running. As I mentioned in my previous video about how I ended up stuck in Hong Kong quarantine, there is that ability to transmit your Chinese green health code into your Hong Kong green health code, for example. And I think this system of disparate but connected green health codes among different countries is going to be somewhat of the norm over the next few years. Speaking of Hong Kong, by the way, let's conclude this video with some positive news in terms of East Asia potentially reopening to foreign tourists. Hong Kong's government recently announced that fully vaccinated non-residents can now visit Hong Kong if they undergo only a seven-day quarantine upon their arrival. And so if you're in the mood to spend an extended period of time here and you're willing to deal with that seven-day quarantine at the start and you're fully vaccinated, then you can come to Hong Kong now, which is not something that I would have expected to say during the year of 2021. So even though that seven day quarantine here at the start is still going to be troublesome for most travelers, I think it's definitely a good sign in the right direction in terms of the rest of East Asia potentially opening up to travelers, let's say in late 2021 or early 2022. Fingers crossed. And with that, our June 2021 update for when can we travel again comes to an end. I hope you've enjoyed this installment. It's been lots of positive news in recent months, and I expect that positive news to continue as more and more Canadians get fully vaccinated and as the rest of the world slowly opens up again. Don't forget, you can check out our articles and our dedicated Travel During COVID-19 resource over on princeoftravel.com to keep up with different countries' reopening efforts. So make sure to visit the website and subscribe to the email newsletter that comes out once a week every Sunday. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the Prince of Travel YouTube channel. Just click the subscribe button below the video and let me know in the comments below, have you gotten your vaccine yet? One dose, two doses? When do you expect is the date that you'll be able to take advantage of Canada's relaxed quarantine restrictions when you're coming back to the country? And where's the first place that you're gonna go on your post-pandemic revenge travel plans? Let me know and I'll see you in the next video. Yes! Yes! Yes, 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 yes! Boo, 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 boo. Vaccination documentation, vaccination documentation.